Yo, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Boys Are Back in Town podcast. I'm Dustin. I'm here with my co-host. Hey, guys. It's Brett. So, man, how does it feel? We are one and two in our fantasy football league. <laughs> well, um, I did uh, start the year 0 and 2, and I am officially 7 and 2 with a hefty, I think, almost 100 point lead. Yeah, I mean, you going over 200 in the past two weeks has definitely helped. Um, you don't have 100 points on me quite yet. You only got 80. Not quite. Um, because my team has kind of been iffy the past couple weeks. But um, I just made a big trade for Devontae Adams. So uh, yeah. I said goodbye to Christian Kirk and Chris Olave for Devontae Adams and Pat Fryermuth. So you guys can let me know if that was a W or an L in the comments. But I, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I liked it. I liked it. Yeah, man. So, um, yeah, like I said last week, um, definitely should start Joe Mixon and or not Joe Mixon, Justin Fields, and look what he did: forty-eight points. And yeah. Guess who started him? Yeah, uh, yeah. You definitely <laughs> scored a, a quarter of your points. Uh, Justin Fields is a great call, and uh, I. We we knew it. I mean, everybody. Yeah. F- sh- if you left him on the bench because the Bears aren't good, then like that's like he's kind of carrying that offense pretty heavy. Well, you know it was crazy. In my other league, in my hundred fifty dollar league, he was on the waiver still, and I had to put in a a waiver claim for him, and I didn't get him after the forty eight point game because I have Jalen Hurts, and I'm not gonna sit Jalen Hurts, so I just didn't even yeah. pick him up. Man, that is crazy. I, I don't know how people leave him on the bench and then they'll probably start somebody like Matt Stafford or Tom Brady. Ugh. It's crazy to me, man. I, I also don't like putting concussion concussion protocol today. Damn. He had yeah, a rough so practice. I, I doubt he plays that. this week. Yeah, there's yeah. no real reason to. I, I also didn't take them to win this week, so no. Um but also <laughs> Joe Mixon. Um, do you think this is a good sell high time? Um, it could be. But he he's never gonna reach this mark again. He'll never score over sixty again. Sixty in PPR no. leagues. Um, he's the seventeenth player in NFL history to score five more or more touchdowns in a game. Yeah, that's like that's a pretty big mark. Like you don't think about it that often. Like not including like passing touchdowns, but like scoring them. That that's a pretty big mark. We haven't seen something like that since Alvin Kamara in like what two years ago, three years ago. Well, before. Before this game, he has not rushed over 80 yards since week one. Yeah. That's... And usually averaging around 50. So I he's scoring good because of the passing down work, but I just, I don't know, um, last three weeks of the year for playoffs, you know, Tampa Bay, New England, and Buffalo. Pretty much the top three run defenses. Yeah, um, I, I do think it's a good sell high. I never like to ride hype like that. Um, the only players that I can, yeah, it's just, it's inconsistent. I mean, you can keep the gamble if you're a three and five, you know, three and six team, or, you know, you're like a losing team, probably just go ahead and keep trying to ride the gamble. But, um, if you're trying to make a playoff push, I'd probably get rid of them and get somebody else on your bench that can probably contribute down the road. Um, so the Colts fired Frank Reich. Um, do you think they have any chance to turn around their season with Sam Ellinger or do you think it's over? Um, I think it's more of like, um, I, Jeff Saturday has only coached high school teams. Um, I think it's actually kind of, it's like, it's like they asked, like, it's like, Hey Peyton, will you come coach for us? He's like, nah. And then like, who's the next best guy, (laughs) the guy giving them the snaps, Jeff Saturday, get in here, big dog. (laughs) Um, I, maybe he has a Dan Campbell effect, which I mean, that effect is like still not very effective, it seems, but you know, you never know what can happen. I I think Sam Ellinger is an absolute tank play. If they keep starting him, then they're, they're not going to win a game the rest of the season. Yeah. Um, he's a six. I was listening to something the other day and they were talking about, they think that they could possibly sit Jonathan Taylor for the rest of the year and save him for next year. But as he's practicing today, I don't think that's going to be true. Uh, There's no way you (laughs) shut down a pro athlete in his prime. 
um, just because like that hurts his legacy more than it hurts him now. So there's no he way he would he would absolutely than... want off the team in the off season if they sat him for the rest of the year. Like just it doesn't matter if you're next year. Yeah, like there's no reason. Like bad teams still got to start their studs. So that they can have the stats to show that they're, or at least, you know, contend for a Pro Bowl or get all pro, stuff like that. Because that, yeah. that stuff does matter to people's legacies. Like, that's what determines if you get into the Hall of Fame or not. So, I mean, it's a big deal. So, if they shut him down, that's, he, he won't be on the Colts next year. Um, so, Josh Allen, um, elbow sprain. I guess is what they ended up getting him. They said he might play. Um, yeah, he said he's gonna power through it and uh, take it week by week. But this is it's kind of a dangerous game to play because yeah. this kind of type of injuries is really common in baseball players, and it's literally the injury that ends most catchers' careers. Like, cause they they won't be able to throw the ball fast from catcher uh, home plate to second ba- base, like it because their elbow can't throw. So. Um, I, I think it's a dangerous game to play, man. It's, it's like the Bills right now, you can afford to play the next couple games without Josh Allen. Yeah, and when we talk about our picks, I'll ask you this question. So, uh, like, uh, I, I just don't understand why you don't give Case Keenum the start for the next couple weeks, let Josh Allen go through the full recovery if needed. Because it's just, it just doesn't make sense. They're, they're a playoff team. With oh, with yeah. yeah with Josh Allen in, under the helm, they're a Super Bowl team, but they're a playoff team. With if you went out and grabbed fucking like some Wendy's worker from you know to go under center, like they're they're a good team. <laughs> so like I just don't understand why you would risk your franchise quarterback's career on on some bullshit. So last Confusing. week we were talking about the NFC beast. What about the AFC beast? I, I guess you know? um, the <laughs> you, you don't really see these kind of things coming, but the AFC East is absolutely insane right now, especially I mean, with the Jets coming in strong, man. How how many teams would you pick to beat the Dolphins right now? Not very many. Not very many. How many team? How many how many teams would you pick to pick the beat the Bills? None. And yeah. then how many teams would you pick to beat the Patriots? I mean, six fifty percent, forty percent. Uh, mean, yeah, it would be most like maybe the top four teams in the NFC would beat the Patriots, but not not but nobody then, else. At the same time, it's the Patriots. You don't pick many teams to beat the Patriots, especially with young and inexperienced quarterbacks. Yeah, it's truth. And the Jets, we talked um, about the Jets, how much we liked them. We didn't think yeah, they were going to be. We didn't like them enough to beat the Bills, but we we no, liked them. But they beat they beat them and they beat them. So yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, even I thought their ta- their season was over when Brees Hall went down, but they figured it out. They brought in James Robinson. They don't believe Jam- or Michael Carter can be that number one guy. But I still he got plenty of work. I didn't think he was going to get that much work, but he's still getting more work than Robinson. Yeah. Um. Well, there's there. It's kind of gradually shifting more to Robinson, and uh, we'll get to well, this in should. my starts. But yeah, I think I think that they're just a well-rounded young team. I think in the next couple years, give them a couple more drafts, that the Jets could be the real deal soon. Yeah, and then um, just a reminder, um, we do have a London game. Actually, it might be Germany. But yeah, I think Munich. it's Germany. Uh, Either way, it starts early, so don't forget to set your lineup Saturday night, Dustin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty uh, bad about that one. Don't uh, don't wait till Sunday morning and then realize that your out guys are playing Sunday morning. It's just not good. Yeah, it's not a great look. <laughs> so uh, we did talk about this last week, or maybe it was the week before, but we have talked about it, um, whether or not the old guy should hang it up. And um, one, I think, should hang it up, and then the other scored with 30 seconds left on the clock against one a really good defense. So Brady's back. Brady's back, man. <laughs> it, that that proved that Giselle was the problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, he's, he's still there. He's getting rid of her, so let's, uh, let's get it. Um, Aaron Rodgers, hang it the fuck up. Yep, uh, I <laughs> guess the, I've been seeing some things that the Packers might uh, bring up Jordan Love, maybe let him split okay. reps, but... I saw 
oh, I can't remember who was talking, but they said Jordan, it was a player that used to play with Jordan Love, said Jordan Love is a starting quarterback in the NFL, and he is more talented than half the quarterbacks in the NFL. So I want to see that. I do too, because every time he started, he has not shown it. No, not at all. Uh, he has not looked uh, good in any of the games he's ever played. So uh, we we'll, do have we'll four see. teams on by this week: uh, Ravens, Bengals, Pats, and Jets. All AFC. Yep. Um, also, a bunch of fantasy valuable teams. So yes. we'll get to that yeah, in our to, waiver you know, wires. With top five tight end, top five, two, two. Let's go top five tight end, two top five quarterbacks. Um, <laughs> Maybe Some three good running top backs. ten running backs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good yeah, running backs. Let's definitely. just, uh, yeah. Definitely going to be a rough week on buys. Um, oh, man. So, Kenyon Drake. I called that one. You did? Um, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Um, I said he was going to be boom or bust. He was more boom than bust. Um, had, like, 80 yards rushing in the second half and absolutely put the Saints away. Um, I, I still think he's a good start until Gus Edwards or Josh uh, or yeah, or Dobbins comes back or JK yeah. Dobbins comes back. Um, so wave wire pickups, um, got a quarterback for you guys. Um, there wasn't many quarterbacks other than like, you know, Daniel Jones, maybe, you know, yeah. he could be, have a pretty good week. Um, if for some reason, Justin Fields is there, pick him up, but Russell Wilson, um, he's getting a little bit more efficient. I don't know if it's just been with the team, been with the team. They're coming off a bye week. Um, that can help a lot in his injury and stuff. And then if you look at the rest of the season schedule for Russ, it's good. Really good. Yeah, um, besides for this week, I think he has a rough week ahead of him this week. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's well, okay. He's playing, he's playing Tennessee. Tough defense. Well, two running backs and tight ends. Uh, allows the fifth maybe, most yeah. fantasy points to quarterbacks. And then we got Vegas, allows the second most fantasy points to quarterbacks. And then Carolina, Baltimore, KC, Arizona, the Rams, and then KC again. Well, I mean, I just don't trust the Broncos' offense. And, like, I guess they get Jerry Judy who's going, but Corlin Sutton has, like, six receptions for 50 yards. In the past yeah. four weeks or something like that. Like, I seen a stat and I was like, that's absolutely, that's your number one. Yeah. And no, their not, rush not game either. is ineffective. <laughs> um, I just, I don't see Russell Wilson getting it going. Still. Um, they played a bad Jag, any... Jaguars defense. Yeah. What, uh, you got any quarterbacks? I do that? have a quarterback. Uh, you mentioned him a little bit. Um, I am taking. Vanilla Vic to replace Lamar Jackson this week. Um, if you need a quarterback and you had Lamar Jackson, I would recommend picking up Daniel Jones because yeah. he's basically the same guy, just like five, six, seven points less a game. I am I wrong, Brett? You can call me out on that. I think that one's a little correct. Um, they both throw for about 200 yards a game. They both throw maybe one or two touchdowns a game. Not Daniel Jones, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, but Lamar mm -hmm. overthrows wide open touchdowns. So, like, uh, you, yeah. as much as he's good, he's also really uh, inefficient Actually, in the throwing. He's not quite there. Yeah. So, but yeah. the the rushing upside's there. That's why you take guys like Justin Fields. Um, this week in waiver wires, though, quarterback that I did want, if he's there, you got to grab him. He's only like 24% owned. Deshaun Watson. Get him now. Yes. Um, he's been held in our league since fucking the yeah, draft. Day one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, that's our league is definitely not regular leagues. But if he's there, you got to grab him. He's going to make the Browns a playoff deep team if he comes back and plays how he did, which he should. Yes. Because he's still uh, – people forget how good prime Deshaun, draw, uh, Deshaun Watson is. He's uh, still in his prime. He made a he's yeah, insane. He made a terrible Texans team. The playoffs every year, like not just the playoffs, the AFC fucking championship most of the time. Yeah. Oh, it was the divisional game, and he he was beating the Chiefs by like twenty one points. He just you know they choked, <laughs> so yeah, they did choke. That that is terrible, but yep. it happens. It does happen. Uh, so um, another wave wire pickup. I've got Jeff Wilson. Um, 
should have been rostered already, but still available in a lot of leagues because he didn't. They people didn't think he was going to overtake Mostert. Yeah. But he did out snap Mostert. Um, same amount of rushes, but he had double the yards on rushing, and he out targeted him. Um, and Jeff Wilson was third in target share on the team, only behind, of course, Tyreek and Waddle. Yeah. Um. Well, as much as we were right about saying pick up Wilson, um, I will say that I was wrong in saying that Mostert was going to get the target share. Um, mo- I thought I was Everyone right coming was out the gate. Mostert scored Everyone a touchdown. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but Mostert scored uh-huh. a touchdown in like the first drive of the game. I was like, this is a good look. It's like uh, everyone that listened to me probably is doing well. Um, he still scored like eight points. I mean, it sucks, but I mean, there's not really. Jeff Wilson only scored like. 15 or something like that so i mean it's not like he yeah. blew up but no uh yeah it definitely just sucks whenever um you see a guy but um i guess he reunited with uh mike Mc, uh, yeah. mcdaniels or whatever i can't remember his yeah. first name yeah. it's mike he, uh, right um yeah mike mcdaniel he, uh, yeah already he knows the playbook yeah. um from the 49ers and fit in there really well did really Good. Yeah, yeah, it fit in right to, like nothing ever happened. Um, my waiver wire for running back, I got Chubba Hubbard. Yeah. Um, Chuba. He's Chuba. Chuba Hubbard. Chuba Hubbard. Chuba. Yeah. No, <laughs> so no I, two Bs. One B. Chuba. Um, well, yeah, so he's uh, actually practicing this week, and whenever he is healthy, Dante Foreman takes the back seat, and um, I think that it's actually a good call to not start Chuba Hubbard. Chuba. Hubbard, but definitely pick him up now. I, I don't I don't think he'll take over, but I think he will get more snaps as they play from behind more into the season. But I think this week is not a good time. I think they'll be running the ball a lot on a terrible Falcons defense. Yeah, but these uh, give waiver wire pickups are more for uh, like future plays more than like yeah, next in, weeks. Yeah, I just I I like Deontay Foreman a lot and have for a long time. And I just, I don't see him losing the do- job to Chuba Hubbard. Um, I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, obviously, but um, I think they're going to, it. if anything, they're going to be a handcuff back duo. Yeah. yeah so yeah. It, if you have one, you might as well have the other. Yeah. And um, um, I got a wide receiver. Okay. Uh, who's your wide receiver? Terrace Marshall. Um, he is the <laughs> de facto wide receiver two on the Panthers, and he's got 15 targets over the last two weeks, and they're playing the Falcons, so that's going to be another shootout where they scored a combined 60 something points last, like two weeks ago. Yeah, um, I think it's going to be a shootout if Baker Mayfield starts. Well, even with PJ Walker, it's, well, it was a shootout with PJ Walker. Yeah, well, I mean, P.J. Walker showed his hand that he's ass last week, so I, yeah, I mean, he, he got benched pretty pretty quick. I mean, but they they played Tampa, so I mean, that's a that's a hard team to play when you're a young they didn't XFL play Tampa. quarterback. What? They didn't play Tampa. Oh no, they played Cincy. They beat Tampa. Yeah, no, they played Cincy. I mean, yeah, they got like, absolutely yeah. rammed by Cincy, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was just a bad game. Yeah, Bad game. Um, Baker come in, score a couple touchdowns. Yeah, I mean he, he came back and at least showed some life. But uh, speaking of Tampa, uh, I got a tight end for you. Kate Otten scored the game winner last week. Yep. Um, but his target share has gradually kind of balanced out. He's gotten what 10, 20, 26 targets in the past five weeks. Yeah, averaging like five targets, six targets a game. So I mean, that's that's not bad looks for a tight end right now. Week seven, my waiver wire was K. Dotton. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. We've talked about it, but then his rostering went way down after yeah, he got well, a two-target, well, fifteen yeah. reception. Yeah, he. The, it's just the Bucks were looking bad. I think the Bucks are gonna revamp and they're gonna be good. Otten's gonna be good, even if. Um, Cameron Brake comes back. I think Otten can still be. Oh yeah, Otten's the young guy on the team. I mean, he's showing that. Uh, I mean, you catch a catch a game winner by Tom Brady. That shows he has faith in you. Yes. He ain't gonna throw to somebody that he doesn't have faith in. So, 
I think uh, that's um, really positive news for K. Dot. My waiver wire tight end of the week is Greg Dulcich. I I banged this drum so many times, and I can't believe he's still only 36% rostered. Um, he's he led the team in receiving last week before their bye, and the rookies are always better off their bye coming off their bye week. They I don't know why, but they just do. And he even was producing with a backup quarterback when. Brett Ripien was playing. Yeah. And he's averaging 12 points a game in every game he's played. And that's good for a tight end right now. I mean, you can't find that. Um, and they have a very good rest of the season schedule, like I said, for Russ. But it's even better for Greg Dulcich, who, you know, tight end, very easy to play against KC, which they play twice, Arizona, Vegas. So, yeah. Yeah, um, I guess somebody is either listening to the show is a little late or came into it because he's plus 22% owned after this last week. Oh, he's man. now at 56% roster, which is super low owned still. Oh, wow. Still that's low. Still yeah, super I, low that's, owned. So, that's so weird because I'm pretty sure I looked at that this morning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, someone may have made a post about it or... um talked about it on nfl on now or something animals. yeah yeah so I, I mean man i just i i haven't even dropped them since i said pick them up in like week what did i t- say week seven I yeah it was a couple up. weeks ago. it was after week six i said well, i picked them up during the game week six game against the chargers i i watched them score that long longish touchdown and like right i was like man this guy's good and i picked them up and i said pick him up that next week and he's scored 12.4 11.1 and 12.7 and he had nine targets in week seven. That's about as good as you can get from a tight end right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, tight ends this that's year all, are pretty bad. That's man. all on my waiver. Yep, that's all my waivers. Um, we'll get into the starts. We talked about it a little bit. I like starting James Robinson this week. Um, yeah. We, we kind of said 50-50 if he was going to be a handcuffs with Michael Carter. He was. I think he outsnaps Michael wait, Carter wait, wait. probably he, 70 wait, wait, to 30. Wait, wait. Hang on. Robinson's on a bye this week. Wait, oh my god, the Jets are on a bye. I didn't even look at that. That was... Well, just kidding. Fucking scratch. Just kidding. Yeah, scratch okay. That. Anyway, yeah. I got a Justin Fields. I didn't Fields. even look. <laughs> I got Justin Fields as another start this week. Um, they're playing Detroit. Uh, hope you listened to me last week. Scored me 48 points. His rushing upside is ridiculous because he broke Michael Vick's rushing yard record for quarterback. Yeah, he, he went insane dude like absolutely just ran right through the dolphins almost brought him back to win it but uh the dolphins just couldn't no the the bears just couldn't stop anything on defense so no, i mean you can't you're not going to be able to stop them two receivers and two right now no well to good. make up for my really bad call i have another couple of running backs uh starting with david montgomery i like him to start against the lions this week oh yeah both him and khalil herbert uh see i have khalil herbert as a sit we can get to that but i like david Ooh. montgomery as a start this week i've got antonio gibson as a start this week um he is coming back from the doghouse um uh, he since McKissick's been hurt, he has been the passing down back and also started the game over Brian Robinson. And he's had 14 targets over three weeks, and that's a lot in PPR for a running back. Um, they should be down big this week to the Eagles, um, unlike what you think might happen. Oh, we but, can um, get there. We can get there. Yeah. Um, but uh, he only had two less rushes than Brian Robinson last week, so I still believe that it could happen for him uh yeah i like gibson over i still have brian robinson as a sit uh super disappointing in that one but um there's just in a commander's offense where they have to throw the ball most of the time gibson is gonna get all that target share so it's really good especially in ppr leagues to focus on gibson over robinson and then um I got Jerry Judy as a start this week. We kind of mentioned him earlier. Um, he is clearly Wilson's favorite target. Um, yeah. And he's had at least seven targets in the last four weeks. Yeah. Um, and that that's crazy. Um, for a Broncos receiver, you know, since guys like um, 
Manuel Sanders and stuff like that. Um, and they're playing the Titans. So could could do good. Yeah, the Titans DBs are pretty pretty bad right now. So I mean, I still think Jerry Judy's the number one over guys like Cortland Sutton, KJ Hamler. I mean, he's just getting more targets. And I don't know if it's just because Russell Wilson only looks at him going down the field. He doesn't look anywhere else. It seems like he sets his eyes on Judy, throws the ball. Yeah, or I mean, Dulcich. He throws it to Dulcich. And uh, coming on my other start, uh, Greg Dulcich. Um, yep. For everything that I stated earlier, as to make sure you've picked him up. Um, you know, he's averaging 12 points a game, very easy rest of schedule. And they're playing the Titans. <laughs> um yeah, I just I really think Broncos are gonna whoop up on the Titans and yeah. Oh well, yeah. Well, we can get down there later. That one's something <laughs> we definitely don't agree on. Um, but uh, my last start, I have Jeff Wilson. Um, it showed that he oh, yeah. obviously knew the offense inside out. He got plenty of trust from Mike McDaniel's. Uh, I think he's the the premier back for the Dolphins. So I I like to start Jeff Wilson and then sit. Raheem Mostert. Raheem, that, that's not opposite bad of last week. Yeah. Um. I don't have too many sits this week. Um. Make sure. I think we should sit all Denver running backs. Uh, I just don't think they're gonna do any good against uh, Tennessee's rush rush defense. But pass defense isn't very good. But their rush defense is very good. Uh, we went through a couple of my sits. Um, I said sit Mostert, sit Herbert. This one, it sounds like it's going to make you mad. I'm sitting Donta Foreman. With Shuba right. Hubbard coming back, I I don't like to start Donta Foreman. Even though I do, I, I have said start him before. But this week, I think you, you just kind of test the water. Don't don't gamble. Um. So, I don't know if you've seen all the Brandon Cook stuff. You know, he's hurt with his wrist or whatever but i he didn't get traded um there's he was supposed to come back but he's he was at wednesday's practice but it was a did not practice so um i just don't see him playing this week so i just have him as a sit because you know even if he does play i just don't see him pouring his heart out for the team anymore yeah um he was a healthy scratch on thursday so I didn't play on Thursday night. They yeah. talked about it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think he's holding out. I don't think he's playing the rest of the season. Yeah, if you have him on your roster, I would start looking elsewhere. Probably even drop him. Trade him. I don't know I about even quite drop him. He is dropped in my other league, and I have not picked him up because I'm just not sure what's going to happen. Um, but also keep an eye on Josh Allen. If you have him as your only QB, you may want to go pick someone up just in case. Yep. Before someone finds out that he's not playing before you and goes and snags a couple of the good quarterbacks, you know, like Dustin mentioned earlier, Daniel Jones, um, Kirk Cousins, somebody like that. Jared Goff's also a good pickup. Jared um, Goff, you know, he's just a high powered offense. So. 12 to 25 points a week. Yeah, you know, so just like don't that. gamble on uh, don't gamble on injuries. Uh, he could go down in the first quarter. Yeah, or if I mean, Josh Allen is your guy, go pick up. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, just just said his name. Back up, Case, Case Keenum. Keenum. Yeah, uh, just go pick him up. The yeah, Bills' offense is gonna do fine whether or not uh, Josh Allen's under center or not. So, I mean, he's throwing to guys like Gabe Davis and Stephon Diggs. How bad can you be? <laughs> <laughs> you got uh, two premier guys. You ready to get into these game picks that you're whooping my butt in? Uh, yep. Yeah, picked up the nine win lead. Over you last week. Um, I am officially 60 and 28. Um, uh, absolutely burning right now. And you are 51 and 37. 51 so and 37. Still both past- doing really well. I'm just doing insane. Yeah, I'll catch back up this week. A few picks at least. I'm sure. Um, um we'll see. So we'll I'll see. just start with our first uh first game. Uh, Falcons at Panthers. <laughs> um, I'll let you go first. I am taking the Falcons. About time you jumped on the Falcons team. Yep, yep, um, I've been yep. saying Falcons. I've been preaching Falcons, and they've been on a burner. I'm staying with them. Falcons are hot. Let them be hot. Oh, Marcus yeah. Mariota's comeback player of the year. Just kidding. Uh, it's Gino. 
<laughs> it is Gino. Um, definitely sucks taking that from everybody else, but Gino especially looks Zaquan. like yeah. And Gino, what's crazy is he's never actually lost his job, a start the starting job. It's always been kind of like shittily taken from him. So yeah. I just even when he was with the Jets, he got in that locker room fight and got you know suspended or whatever whatever ended up happening i have never actually read the full story on what happened no he but, got in that fight and like i think he like broke his hand or something yeah and it, it, it like couldn't play. And, yeah yeah but um yeah I just then he went to the giants um he's an absolute he's hated among giants fans not for his play or for him whipping our ass last week but because he broke eli manning's start streak yeah, I don't know if you remember, right. that. I remember that. Um, I remember that. McAdoo started Geno Smith like week eight or some shit and broke yeah. Eli Manning's start streak. Even and, um, though yeah, we it, were Eli pissed. was clearly clear Eli was clearly in his last year and you guys were not gonna make the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, there's just yeah. it made no sense, man. I was yeah. so mad. Uh, and then he ended up putting Eli in after like the first quarter. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> literally just like something happened and yeah but uh talking about gino um next game bucks at seattle who you got <laughs> i'm taking the seahawks Ooh. yeah um, i'm taking the bucks i like the seahawks here as much as the bucks showed little life last week they still scored under 20 yeah i um so yeah no way dude um i'm taking the seahawks the seahawks team is a little more rounded they look good. The defense looks good. The offense is still crazy good. So I'm taking the Hawks. Um. So your team, Giants at Texans. I'm assuming you're taking the Giants. Yep. No doubt about it. Give me the Giants. Yep. Um. Me I'm also. Right. We're five point. Five point favorites, which I am oh. not a huge fan of. That that hurts. Um, I'm not sure why we're five point favorites, but definitely need I am to be, taking the definitely Giants. need to be button, betting that. Betting the Texans betting spread far, might be yeah. not bad. Yeah, because um, I think that game's gonna be a three pointer. Really, I don't think so. You think I the Giants think cover five? Oh yeah, I, I God, I hope so. I just don't think we can stop Damian Harris. Or, uh, Damian Pierce. Damian Pierce, yeah, not Damian Harris. Well, he was questionable today. Or he did get questionable and limited practice today, so they may lighten up his work a little bit. A little bit. They've been just running the crap out of him. Yeah, they're definitely trying to get him offensive player, uh, offensive rookie of the year. That's for sure. Oh yeah. Um, next uh, game I got uh, Chiefs and Jags. Um, this one's not so surprising. I'm taking Chiefs. Yeah. Same here. I mean, just the Chiefs are good. What do you think about Kadarius Tony coming in just healthy out of nowhere? Oh, yeah, it's nice, huh? Yeah, just, <laughs> just fantastic. Yeah, salt, great, great, salt great. the wound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, this one's actually going to be a good game. It's probably going to be the best game on the slate this week. Vikings Bills. Yeah. Um, I've got the Bills, but I if Josh Allen ends up not playing. I would probably want the Vikings, but right now, as we're recording this, um, I'm going to go ahead and take the Bills, and if Josh Allen doesn't play, oh well. They could still win it. I mean, good team. Yeah, they're, they're a good team. Very serviceable backup. Facts. Um, I'm Vikings also taking are good. the Bills. Um, I don't matter. Um, Bills are the better team. Kirk Thuggins could throw it down and win it. I wouldn't be surprised. Yep. Um, Bills are only three and a half point favorites, so I mean that game could go either way. But I do like the Bills. Um, Dolphins at Browns. Oh man, I've been going back and forth on this one as more than I should. I'm going with Dolphins. Um, they're three and a half point favorites. I think they're playing in Miami. Yeah, they're playing in Miami, so I'm going to go ahead and go Dolphins. Okay. Yep, same, same, same. Um, Let's see. Broncos and Titans. Yeah, you uh, voiced your opinion on this one earlier. I don't see what you're talking about. The Titans are going to throw it down. Titans are the better football team. They almost beat the Chiefs last week. 
They did almost beat the Chiefs, but the Chiefs looked terrible for some reason for a minute. Yeah, because the Titans' defense kind of throws it down. Yeah. Um, I got uh, Bears and Lions. This one, I have a feeling we're going to get spread out on. I'm taking the Lions. I figured you were. I am taking the Bears. Uh, I mean, I just think after that defense came out playing a little high, the only thing the Lions need to do now is get that offense rolling like they had in the first couple weeks. And the mm-hmm. Lions, they're not going to be a playoff team, but they could win eight, eight or nine games. Maybe not nine. Maybe yeah, seven or I eight really, games. I really thought they were going to be a playoff team, and they've just been not very good. They've been throwing away games in the in the fourth quarter, man. So, yeah. Let's see who's uh, next. Saint Steelers. Yeah, Saint Steelers. Yep, yeah, me too. Um, I've got the Saints. I also got the Saints. Um, they looked really bad against the Eagles. Um, not against the Eagles. Uh, against the Ravens. It just the Ravens are a really good team. The Saints aren't a bad team. They can get it going on offense, but they just didn't. Um, I, I still have faith that they're a good team. I don't think they're a playoff team, but they are better than the Steelers, who might be sitting Najee Harris this week. I've heard. Might be getting the old bench, which is a, this a crazy news, man. That is crazy. Um, definitely weird. Um the next game, I've got Raiders and Colts. Um, the Colts would say that on record that they're a better team. They are six point dogs, though. Um, I'm taking the Raiders. I'm also taking the Raiders. I see the Raiders bouncing back. Yeah, the Raiders the might Colts. score fifty. I hope so. Completely honest, and Devontae Adams might go for his second thirty point game in a row. And uh, yeah, it'll be always, always good, always good. I've got him in our dynasty. Yeah, it would be great for me. So, <laughs> all right, first three, oh, second three o'clock game here Cowboys, Packers. Oh, oh, I know who I'm going with. Who you going with? Well, can't say go pack go because it's, it's going to be the Cowboys. Um, oh, 100%. It's not even going to be close. Cowboys are only five point favorites. So, hammer that. I don't know why they're only given five points here. The Packers won't even stay within ten. So I like the Cowboys here to cover that five point spread as well. Yeah, buddy. Um Rams and Cardinals. It's always these freaking the what is that? NFC NFC West. West. Yeah, they're NFC. They're always West. playing three o'clock games. Always playing three o'clock games. It's every time. Rams, Cardinals, Seahawks. They're yeah. always forty ers they, they, they get the three o'clock games. I don't know why. I don't particularly even like watching NFC West games. Um, I think that the before the NFL scheduled them all because they're like, yeah, these are good games. I think they need a better spread of noon and three o'clock games, maybe even fifty fifty of them. But having eight at noon and then three and at three, yeah, that's the stupidest so stupid, thing I've ever seen. dude. Like, yeah, I, like I, I it's hate so that hard. shit. It's hard to keep up with eight games at noon, like. Yeah, I mean, I'm just sitting there just flopping on Sunday ticket. The Giants didn't play on Sunday, so I was tr- actually actively trying to watch eight games at once, and I my brain was fried. And that's <laughs> red zone. I was like, the oh, my gosh. Go. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I like watching. Uh, I, I, I really enjoyed the, the Dolphins-Bears game, so I, I stuck with that one. I did like to watch some of that. Um, that was kept a good flopping to the Bills and Jets because it was getting crazy there at the end. Yeah, and then I, I watched the end of the Bucks rams game, which is absolutely phenomenal. But, uh, yeah, um, talking about the Rams, I'm not fucking taking them. I got the Cardinals this week. I've got the Rams. I yeah. think, um, well, I said that. I, I had that before I knew about the Stafford thing. If Stafford doesn't play, then they're definitely not going to win. But uh, I picked the cards last week. They burned me, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, um, they lost to the Seahawks. I called that one. Yeah, um, yeah, they burned me, so I am going Rams this week because they've got to do something, man. They they gotta they gotta do something. Yeah, I don't know how. I've never seen a Super Bowl hangover team this bad. Um, this it's bad. Just, oh. It's it's just bad. <laughs> like three wins through week nine is not exactly what was on anybody's bingo card. No, not at all. Um, Forty Niners Chargers. This might be the best Sunday night game we've gotten in a minute. Yes. Um, 
I am taking the Chargers. I've been dogging the shit out of the Chargers all season long, but Justin Herbert on Sunday night is a beast. I like Justin Herbert this year. Everyone's down on him, but I think he's got no weapons, man. Like, Yeah, all of his weapons are hurt, but him and Josh Palmer came through big last week. For sure, for sure. Who do you got? Um, I've got the Niners. <laughs> uh, I flip-flopped. Um, I, I do like the Niners here, but uh, it's, just a, it's just a game. Um, the Niners are seven-point favorites. Which is kind of crazy. So, yeah, I'm still going Chargers. It, it'll it be a game. But uh, we'll see what happens. And then, then Monday, Monday night, night, we got an <clears throat> NFC Beast Showdown. Yeah, baby. I mean, we clearly know who's going to win. The Eagles, for me. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going with a little bit of an upset here. Um, the only teams that seem to be able to knock off NFC East teams are NFC East teams. So... Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and go Commanders. This may be a really bad call, but if the Commanders can somehow beat the Eagles and at least make them spiral downward a little bit, we both have to play them, like, what, combined three more times Yeah. And for the rest of the season. So we, we need them off their high horse a little bit so we at least can maybe sneak out one or two games. Yeah, I I just I don't see the Commanders even really getting close. Um, that's why I think Antonio Gibson could have a really good week. Terry McLaurin. Yeah, I mean it, I think it'll be a good game for sure. Um, yep. so those are all of our games. Um, I was actually going to do this. Um, I think we should do a mid-season award segment. Okay. Who is your midseason MVP right now? Well, I I'm a little biased. Um, I'll give you kind of a top three. That way, I just you can't really pick one right now. Can't give um, me a top three. I want one guy. Because I'm also just gonna go with one guy. We'll we'll just do one guy. See what happens. Because we both know who's obviously the favorites to win it. But uh, yeah, I I want this to be more of like a pick 'em. I I I'd, I'd still I think I'd take Josh Allen. Um, I'm going to stray away. As much as I like Josh Allen, and I I do think he'll play the rest of the season. I think Patrick Mahomes gets his second MVP. Yeah, I think rest of season I could definitely see Mahomes taking over. Mahomes looks like a whole different animal, and Josh Allen's been looking a little rough, but. At half season, I do think Josh Allen is the half season MVP. Oh, half season right now, you counted up Josh Allen's the winner. Yeah, that's kind but of what I thought for, we were going with there. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Um, well, just rest the season, I do see Mahomes definitely taking over because he's playing out of his freaking mind. Yeah, um, everyone's saying Jalen Hurts is the MVP. I don't see it. He's no, not the not MVP. At all. Um, not at all. He doesn't have the stats to back it up. No. Um, comeback player of the year. We talked about it a Gino. little bit. Yeah, I, I I think it's Gino and um yeah. Saquon did come back from a like a couple hard years on bad knees and he's playing crazy, mm-hmm. but yeah, Gino is literally playing out of his mind. He's playing incredible football right now. Yeah. And just for a quarterback who a team that we all thought was going to tank, they're I'm pretty sure they're pretty close to leading their division. Yeah, they they might even be winning it. I think they are leading yeah, I, it. Um, I've got it right here. Um, I think they're tied with the Niners. Um, they are. No, the, no, 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 no. They have a two-game lead on the Niners. Holy shit! The Niners are four and four. Yeah, no. Four the, four, yeah, yeah, man. He he might lead them to a divisional title, and uh, yeah. that's 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 comeback player of the year worthy. I, I think yeah, uh, Gino is easy. Yeah, because Cardinals are three and six, Rams three and five. Niners four and four and Seattle six and three. Let's go. How about offensive player of the year? I think this one's pretty offensive. pretty easy. You're probably gonna say Saquon. No. And no? Well uh um, Tyreek Hill. He is doing great, but you know, over how a thousand receiving yards already. I I just I really don't think 
he'll get it. Um, I think offensive player of the year. How often is a quarterback offensive player of the year? If there's like it's two MVP, two off- MVP yeah, guys, nice. yeah. Otherwise, like they'll give it to like the MVP candidate who wasn't a quarterback. They'll give it to the offensive player of the year, like, kind of like they did Cooper Cup last year. Yeah, I just we may loop back to this one. Let me think on this one for a minute. I. Hmm. Yeah, we can skip it and go to defensive player of the year. Defensive player of the year, Micah Parsons. Yeah, I agree. Um, I 100% no doubt in my mind it's Micah Parsons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Man's yeah, especially just right now. straight eating it up. Yeah, he, he's a different animal. Um, I I don't even really. There's no one that comes to mind for it either, like that would take it away from him. Um, uh, offensive player of the maybe year, maybe Darius really Slay. See, yeah, I could really see Nick Chubb. I could see Nick he's Chubb been, winning it too. Yeah. Yeah. He's been very just dominant and that's what really helps if you just don't have a bad beak. You just super dominant. And I, but I could see Hill Hill has been I mean breaking records. Crazy. Yeah, he might break the all-time receiving record this year. I hope so. Yeah, me too. We we thought it was coming from Cup last year, but Hill's on way better than Cup was last year right now. He's on like an insane tear. Yeah. Um, offensive rookie of the year. Well, it was going to be Brees Hall, but <laughs> no doubt, clearly that's not going to be come to fruition. I think it's a toss up between two guys right now. Um, I like Damian Pierce a lot, and I like Chris Olave a lot. Really, you missed the one that I didn't think. I think it's Kenneth Walker. Well, yes, I kind of forgot about him. Yeah, I like him over Chris Olave. Yeah. And I like him over Pierce. Yeah, I'd go Walker. I completely forgot about Walker. Yeah, um, I mean, he kind of had a slow start because uh, he was but, back up. Um, yeah. If you want to talk about complete seasons, Damian Pierce has played the entire season. So he, he also probably has a really good chance at offense rookie of the year. We'll, we'll just see yeah, what happens it, here. If he just keeps producing the way he's producing, yes. 100%, yeah. And uh, defensive rookie of the year. I think this one's pretty hands down. There's that Seattle corner that looks really good. I know you're but, talking about. Um, yeah, Tariq Woolen or something like that. Yeah, but he's him. not as good as Sauce. No, Sauce Gardner, uh, Gardner yeah. is the. I think he's the best corner in the league right now. I I, I actually believe that because Jalen Ramsey doesn't look that good this year. No. Um, Trayvon Diggs is looking good, but he's definitely not on Sauce's level. Um, well, all the Bills I mean, corners are terrible for some reason. The only good, the, I mean, the best corners that we've seen in a while have been drafted in the last two drafts, man. Let's see who got uh, Patrick Sertan last year, Sauce Gardner this year. I mean, we've just seen some absolute beasts, man. And as much as I want to say it's Kayvon Thibodeau, it's just not. <laughs> yeah, Thibodeau's. It's not that he hasn't been producing. He's uh he's absolutely getting the rush off, which is good. But uh yeah, it's it's Sauce Gardner. And uh lastly, coach of the year. Hmm. Probably Brian Dable. I think it's either Dayball or Sala. Sala. I don't know how the fuck you Sala. say. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's between them two. Um I, I'm obviously pretty biased whenever I say it's Dable. So um yeah, he's he's my uh, coach of the year. I think it's gonna be pretty easy, especially if the Giants make the playoffs. Yeah, definitely he'll get coach of the year if that happens. Um but Mike McCarthy's up there as well. Um, you know, winning that many games with a backup quarterback. That is true. That does help. Um, but um, yeah, Mike McCarthy kind of stepped into a good situation. It's not like he like turned around a program. No, definitely Dable did turn around a program. Does help. Um, they still don't have a lot of weapons on the offense other than Barkley. 
Yeah, we're, yeah, we're fucked. Um, Galladay's yeah, coming back Saitland, this week. Slayton, maybe. Yeah, I saw Galladay coming back. Yeah, I picked um, him up. Uh, just out of hopes. Uh, I had an open spot, so I was going to grab him. <laughs> Anything else? Nope, I'm pretty much done. Um, yeah, guys, that has been it. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure you drop a like. And uh, yeah, we'll be posting next week. We'll see you then. See you guys. Back in town